Research has shown that our well-being is closely connected to our self-image and sense of self-worth. Dr. Reza Meir qualified as a GP and then became fascinated by the idea that he could get patients to feel better by helping them to look better. It's not the most conventional approach, but then Dr. Meir isn't that concerned about conventional thinking, as Zaki discovered. Dr. Reza Meir has the looks and lifestyle that wouldn't be out of place on TV. But his family and friends will tell you that he's very real. He's also very active in the field of aesthetic medicine and contributes his time to helping young patients with facial problems. I don't usually bring a camera crew with me when I visit the doctor, but today we're going to meet someone who isn't your average GP. We're taking a closer look at Dr. Reza Mia instead of the other way around. Dr. Mia. Hello, how are you? <laughs> Thank you for inviting me into your chair. Good, nice to see you. Yeah. Have a seat. Thank you. So what procedures will you be performing on me today? Today we'll be doing the Mega Boost Vitamin Infusion, which gives you a nice dose of vitamins, minerals, antioxidants, and it'll give you a bit of an energy boost. So before we begin, we'll do your vitals and do a nice just a general medical check. Make sure you're in fit and healthy condition. <laughs> awesome. Having checked her blood pressure as well as heart and lung functions, Dr. Mia was satisfied that Zaki was, in fact, as healthy as she looked. So why am I doing that? Okay, keep very still for me, okay? He then proceeded with the first stage of the treatment, which his patient chose not to watch too closely. Thank you so much, Carmen. Pleasure. <laughs> Thanks, Carmen. Risa, what are the benefits of IV treatments and boosters over normal oral supplements? The main difference is anything that you take orally is absorbed through your gut and that passes through your liver and we have something called the first pass metabolism. So you will remove or destroy much of what you uh, ingest versus when you put it into your veins it goes straight into your bloodstream and you can better access whatever it is that you're trying to take. And are they safe, she says, while having one in her arm? Yes, they are. You know, there are certain conditions where you shouldn't be using this. For example, if a patient has an allergy to any of the ingredients or if they have any sort of uh, condition that, uh, you know, makes it unsafe to be putting fluid into them. What is the influence of positive self-image on our health? It's interesting that they've done studies that show that looking good actually makes you feel better and lifts your mood. So it's important to look after both of those elements. You know, aesthetics is a very uh, exciting and dynamic field. It's always growing, there's always new things coming out. Skin boosters is a new type of uh, filler that we use. Very tiny molecule designed to create little collagen sponges under the skin. These absorb water and very effectively treat fine lines, acne scars, moisturize the skin. You think of it like internal moisturizer. I've heard about a non-surgical facelift. Can you elaborate on that for me? Sure. You know, previously we used to rely on injectable toxin, for example, in the jowls and turkey neck to give us that lifting effect, as well as filler in the cheeks and nasolabial folds to give a little bit of a lifting effect. The problem is if you try to use any of those methods in excess of what looks normal, you run the risk of having a patient look like they've had something crazy done to their face, which is never the end point. With the resorbable sutures, with absorbable cones, what we do is we run it under the skin and we target specific areas to lift the nasolabial folds, uh, the jowls, the neck. We've even done brow lifts. And this allows us to achieve quite a remarkable result without surgery. You know, we do it under aseptic conditions, but we do it here in the chair. And how long does that last? You'll get about two years out of each treatment. You feel uh, a bit more energized? I feel like I could run a marathon. Good. <laughs> I know you're involved in a lot of diverse projects. I'd love to hear more about this. Sure. Well, maybe it's better if I show you one. That would be great. Oh, are you ready to be amazed? I'm ready to be amazed. Let's go. So what do you call this beautiful vehicle? This is called the Rojet. This is one of our uh, first uh, creations. I did not expect it to look like that. This is amazing. Step inside. I feel like I'm in a jet, a private jet. Well, that's the whole idea. It's to bring the luxury of private air travel to the road. 
we noticed people were landing in private jets, getting off into tiny little cars or minibuses, and if they were working as a team on the plane, they had to stop everything until they reached where they were going. So this allows you to use it as a mobile meeting venue and uh, you know, keep connected and keep on working. Will we see something like this in the air one day? The reason we got into aviation in the first place and noticed all of these things is because we're working on a world's first. A light jet that takes off like a helicopter and flies like a plane. I actually have a model of it right here. So this is actually a little model of the airplane itself. The idea was to make it look unique. You know, it needs to look like something from the future because you design an airplane for 5, 10, 15 years away. It's not for today's market. And we're working towards uh, building our first prototype and then certification and, of course, worldwide sales. We've seen Riza at work. We've seen a little bit of play. Tell us, where does your story begin? We grew up in Indonesia. I went to Sacred Heart College for most of my education and then I went to Crawford uh, in the later years of high school. And what was it like growing up as a son in the Mia family? Well, it was actually quite inspirational. I got to watch my dad and my mum you know, achieve quite a lot in their lives. My mum was working towards a PhD in physiology. My dad you know, started and ran a number of uh, businesses. Obviously, my siblings were always there you know, to support me, give me company. It, uh, it, was, uh, it was good. Risa, you're a doctor, you have an MBA, and you have a master's degree in investment banking and finance. Where did you find the time to do all of this? I find it difficult to, to sit still. And I also, while I'm watching TV, I tend to read or study. So it's really just in every day, I squeeze in whatever time I can get. Would you say that giving back is as important as being successful? Giving back is very important uh, and is you know, almost more important than being successful. What I do is I work a lot with the Smile Foundation. We try to raise money for them wherever we can. And uh, obviously, being a doctor, we look for ways that we can help wherever we can. You obviously have very busy days. How do you recharge your batteries and keep fit? I like to do uh, you know, things like Krav Maga, boxing. I train with various uh, martial arts weapons, punching bags, uh, gym. Uh, again, it's as diverse as I can be. Well, I know we're off to a boxing class right now. Well, let's get going. <laughs> I'm going to beat you. <laughs>